Hello YouTube and welcome to the World of Football YouTube channel. We're very appreciative of you coming around. I am your host, Adam Snow, and sitting across the table from me, as always, is my father, the host, the founder of many things happening here at the World of Football, Randy Snow. How are you today? Great. Great weekend of XFL football. That's right. He just gave away the lead. We are here to talk <laughs> about our first impressions of week one of the brand new XFL Um a lot of stuff to kind of cover, and we're going to try to go through everything, our general impressions. But if you want to hear us talk a little bit more in depth on it, we do have a weekly podcast. We post every single Tuesday. It will be up tomorrow, uh, today being Monday. It will be up tomorrow, Tuesday, the 21st of February, where we will probably go in way more depth on a lot of the things we you know, liked, didn't like, want to see from the XFL going forward. So be sure to go check that out to hear our you know more uh, in-depth in depth conversation on the XFL but right now it's mainly just first impressions and real quick we're going to go through week one and you know let's talk about some scores you know the first game up was the Arlington Renegades defeating the Las Vegas Vipers 22 to 20 that was a great comeback for the Renegades their defense really came to play in the second half you didn't see much of this game did you um I saw a good share of it but yeah not all of it yeah this was like the one game I saw because Vipers fan here, so of course they blew that one. Uh, I didn't get to see much of the Saturday night game. The Houston Roughnecks against the Orlando Guardians, where the Roughnecks won 33 to 12. Any thoughts from that game? Um, I thought I was going to hate the Houston uniforms. I know you didn't care for them, but I, I don't know. We can go into uniforms later. Oh, but yeah, we'll get around to the uniforms in a second. <laughs> um, the St. Louis Battlehawks had a great, probably the best comeback of the weekend. I thought it was great highlights. That last couple of minutes of the game were unreal. The Battlehawks defeating the San Antonio Brahmas 18 to 15. And then Sunday, the DC Defenders defeating the Seattle Sea Dragons 22 to 18. Uh, last night I saw a little bit of this. You watched that game. Watched the whole thing. Seemed like it was pretty entertaining. You know, uh, yep. these, DC came back. Yep. Uh, so a couple comebacks this weekend. So I think overall, highly entertaining, or a little more entertaining than maybe we would have thought. Yeah, some some teams didn't have a whole lot of scoring going on. Um, but overall, the, the games were pretty good for you know guys that have been in camp for five weeks and didn't have any contact uh, in practice. So um, yeah, you know, for the very first game they ever played after putting the uniforms on, it wasn't too bad. Yep. And if you're a betting person, I mean, they had the over under you know line there on yeah. on the scoreboard, but I think three of the four games hit the over. Mm. Like, uh, very impressed by that. Like, I would have said under for most of those games, and I think three of the four all w took the over, which did surprise me a little bit. There was a little more scoring than I even thought was going to happen. Um, but so let's go through what were some of the, your favorite things you saw that the XFL did this weekend? Uh, well, I thought that the uh, officiating, uh, n not so much the officiating, but the uh, replays and the challenges uh, went very smoothly. They they went to what was it Dean Blandino and you could see him working you know picking different angles from one big screen, uh, picking out the right angle to see did was that a catch was it not a catch you know all that sort of thing. I thought that went very efficient, so I was uh, I was impressed with the way they handled those. I, I agree. I think the 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 replay stuff was all fantastic. My only critique, and you know the NFL or we all hope the NFL would steal that idea. I just I could do with a little less of the behind the scenes like i think it's a little too much quote all access that right. the xfl and these spring right. leagues have been doing reel that in a little bit get a little more professional uh you know that's just me personally that feels that way i don't know if you feel that way but i think you know seeing dean is cool and everything but hey let's just keep the game moving like that first game i remember sitting there i was like it was an hour and the whole first half was pretty much over i was like I, i'm loving this the quick pace getting the game over sure they have a running clock so that helps but if this was an NFL game, and all you know, we don't need to cut to Dean Blandino with every little thing. Maybe right. for a big review, but like for those little things, right. let's just keep the game moving. Like that's the point. Yeah. I think it's a little too much access, but hey, whatever. Beggars can't be choosers. I just I do like that the uh, replay stuff. I think is very efficient. Yeah, they have a very efficient system uh, that works pretty well from what I've seen so far. Yep, and then. Um, you know, what the, we did a positive. How about I'll throw a negative your way? And it's the, speaking of the access, the sideline reporters. You guys got to chill. That's <laughs> That was one thing. Like, that first game, that dude, I get it. You're trying to just do your job and get your microphone in there to talk to players. And hearing from players is cool and all. But in the middle of a game, I, I could do without that. And yeah. seeing a guy run after some dudes while they're celebrating and trying to get a microphone in their face. 
big thumbs down for me. Like, what are you guys doing? Like, and and they even went up to Bob Stoops middle of the game after uh, their team had a penalty or there there was a no call or something, and he was fuming. Oh, what's happening? Oh, you got the guy with the microphone just creeping in there like, hey, yeah. coach, what'd you think of that last play? What do you think he thought? He's pissed. Stop talking to him. <laughs> like, I just, that sort of stuff bugs the crap out of me. This ain't the Pro Bowl where, you know, we're here to have fun. These are, this is real games that these guys are trying to get out there and take seriously and feel like the sideline people are making, I won't say making a mockery of it, but it's just, I don't know. I just don't like that presentation of it. Yeah, that that one uh, reporter, he happened to be in the end zone when a, a touchdown was scored, and and the guys are celebrating, and he's trying to push players out of the way to get to the guy that scored the touchdown. And I thought, what an idiot! Get out of there! And he and he wouldn't stop until he finally did have the guy, you know. But it was uh, back on the sidelines. He chased him down until he finally got his little interview. But I thought that was that was terrible to see him in the end zone, you know, with everybody celebrating, trying to get his his ten seconds of fame out there. I didn't like care for that at all. No. Yeah, I think uh, chill on that. Like they need to just have a designated area where if you want to talk to a player, right. have a designated area after a play is done. Stop this, this in the middle of the game. Right. Just stop it. We're here to watch football. I don't need every guy's story. I want to right. hear every guy's story, but not in that that way. Like leave them alone. They're playing a game. And most of the little clips they got were was a bunch of nothing anyway. Yeah. yeah. So these, these guys, they, they didn't know what to say at that moment, and it, was, yeah. it wasn't even worth it. Yeah. So cut back but, on that. Yep. Um, another thing, I guess I'll go for with a, with a like, which was seeing Dwayne Johnson, Danny Garcia, and Jerry Cardinal um, at all four games this right, weekend. Right? Yeah, that was that was pretty cool. Seeing the the four or the three main owners going to all four cities was really yep. cool. And Dwayne, you know, came out with his, you know, Dwayne's got a great PR team. He's got somebody <laughs> writing those little spiels for him. I'm sure, you know, talking about the X and the XFL standing for the crossroads of destiny and. And dreams or whatever, and they're bringing the I don't know whatever his phrase is. He he's very good at picking out like having a phrase like that and then beating it into the ground. So very in you know I was into that sort of thing. I was like at least they're behind it and they're behind these guys. It sounds like so very cool seeing an ownership group like this being front and center and showing up for their product. I think that's a good sign. Yeah. Well, they had to get on a plane. You know, they did two games each day on Saturday and Sunday. So what the first day they they went from. Uh, what was it, uh, from Arlington to... Arlington to Houston. To Houston. And then Saturday, they went from San Antonio... Oh, yeah. To Washington, D.C. To Washington, D.C. So they mainly stayed in Texas for the right. first three, and right. then flew out to... I wonder if they designed that by choice. Like, well, let's not do a whole lot of traveling. I, yeah, I don't know. So, but it was cool to see them there. Yeah, I don't think you'll see them all season long. Maybe maybe one game every weekend. Maybe. But man, that, that had to be two long days for them. Right. All right. Your turn. What was something else you didn't like? Um... Some of the uniforms I didn't like, um, and the ref uniforms I thought are going to take a little getting used to. Yeah. You know, they're they're like one solid black, uh, look, look like suspenders on their uniforms going down from their shoulders. So yeah, it's I, weird. It'll I just was, get some, yeah, it'll take get, a, a little getting used to. But uh, the the best uniforms uh, I thought were my St. Louis Battlehawks. Yeah, they're up uh, there. They, they used to have the the blue helmet, which I thought was pretty cool. Now they go they've gone to a silver helmet. Which is okay, but I wasn't expecting that. So I was Gee, a, a little... silver helmet with a blue face mask, a little bit like his beloved Detroit Lions <laughs> used to support. Yeah, that's just probably why I like him so much. But and then I thought the worst. What? what who did you think had the best uniform? Uh, hard to say because you know half of them were road uniforms, so we haven't seen all of the uniforms yet. So right. I don't want to go out on them. And it's also I, finally seeing the uniforms in motion on a field. Right. right. Changes because like seeing them all on the mannequin. Eh, like I wasn't impressed by any of them, right? Uh, but now seeing them in motion, I kind of like eighty percent of the San Antonio Brahmas uniform. Mm -hmm. Just not a fan of their helmet. Yeah, uh, I like their helmet. It, you know, I probably can't give that an answer till next week, once or once all the teams have had you know shown off their home uniforms. Mm -hmm. But of the ones this weekend, I, I think I really I did like the Battle Hawks road uniforms, and I did like the. Um, Kind of like the defenders look. I ain't gonna lie. The DC defenders had a really yeah. good. I like that solid red. Yep. Camo helmet takes a little getting used to, but I like that logo. So they were like ninety percent there. Oh, which was the team that had the the half and half helmet? Oh, was that, that was the Roughnecks. Roughnecks. I did. I did not like the Roughnecks helmets. Their, their uniform. I did not like yeah, any like of that. Like half black, half white, yep. and with didn't red thing. It. Didn't dig it. Uh, it didn't work for it, me. At first, I thought, well, that's really weird. And then as the game went along, I thought, you know, it's not too bad. So I I, I didn't totally to hate it. it, but it was it, it was different. 
it's different, which is fine for this league, but I just I couldn't get used to it. It's just not a fan. Okay. But uh, yeah. Well, now we have to uh, address the elephant in the room, and that is the demise of the beer snake. Goodness gracious. The the beer snake was the greatest highlight to come out of <laughs> the last incarnation yes. of the XFL. Yes, it was. And, and then the beer snake 2.0 um, getting dismantled by those security guards. What a travesty. Yeah. What are you doing? What are you doing? It's, you know it's your Washington tradition, and it's a tradition now. I love it. Yeah. And you just, I get, maybe they stopped it because there were people just throwing the, the cups at the people. But come on. Like, they all know what's happening. But to see those security guards just all roll up there and tear that thing apart. You, you weren't watching the game. You, you I wasn't going to bed uh, by the time that happened. But they did not actually show the beer snake being dismantled on TV. You had to wait till today to see a YouTube oh, yeah. video of somebody in the stands who videoed the, the demise of the, of the beer snake. But, yeah, and then they started throwing lemons onto the field. Okay, yeah. <laughs> and that they did show. I mean, you you couldn't help but notice that. They actually stopped the game for a minute when, when they were lining up. Uh, one team was close to scoring, and, and they, uh, they stopped the game for just a second uh, because people were throwing lemons at them, and they, they made the players get back. And then when they resumed the play... They had stopped throwing, but there were still lemons on the field. They didn't pick them up, so you can still see lemons on the field uh, for one of the uh, couple of plays, I guess. Yeah. And other things, you know, of note this weekend, female officials. It was cool. So I think there, yes. you, there was uh, female officials in every game, which is pretty neat. I, I want to say there were two, at least two in every game, okay. in all four games. I know there were multiple in, in a couple of games. But, yeah, female referees, every week, which was cool to see. All, all about that. And then, you know, I think just the presentation overall just – I think was very positive, and the attendance. I think it was like twelve thousand in attendance for three of the four yep. games, yep. while the San Antonio game had twenty four thousand. Twenty four thousand, yeah. So double the attendance, and they're going to. They did announce that San Antonio will be the host of the XFL Championship yes. in May. So that's a pretty cool thing too. Yep. Um, and you know, just as far as the aesthetic, I loved how the Brahma's field was set up. You know, the art. You know, Arlington. You know, they, everybody had their fields looking pretty nice, with the exception of the DC Defenders. I don't know what was going on there. Why they couldn't? The end zones painted. The XFL logo seemed like an a- afterthought in the middle of the field. Yeah. So I don't know if that was just. Uh, maybe they had something else going on or something scheduled, and it just didn't work out. But for the most part, the aesthetic of the XFL this weekend, whether it be the play on the field, be the um, broadcast aesthetic or be the uh field aesthetic you know everything mm-hmm. i think everything worked i think i give it a, a big thumbs up this weekend i'm gonna keep checking it out of course and it's kind of our duty here at the world of football <laughs> to keep following them but yeah so that's my overall thoughts on how this weekend went how about you as we wrap this up yeah a uh, very positive um feeling about the, the whole xfl uh, the game presentation on tv even, you know different networks different announcers um it all worked really well so uh yeah i i'm Pleased with the way everything went. Yep. So what did you guys think? How was your experience with the XFL in week one? Did you even check it out? If not, does this make you want to check out the XFL? I think there's a lot of positivity and you know good vibes going around right now for the league. And hopefully it can sustain and actually get to a championship game and actually thrive for years to come. I'm actually very excited about the possibilities for this league. Um, so that's uh, all I got. You all good? I'm good. All right. We thank you guys for watching. Remember to check out that podcast this week in the world of football. We'll go in a little more depth on that XFL weekend for sure. And uh, also, guys, be sure to subscribe to the channel, hit that like button, hit the bell notification to be notified whenever we drop new videos. The website is www.theworldoffootball.com. You can find a bunch of great stuff there. Randy keeps good care of that website over there. Uh, You can follow us on all the different social medias. Links and stuff are down in the description below. So until our next video, which I don't know what it is, probably something to do with the Arena Football League next time. Uh, What a Mm. great tease there. (laughs) Um, Yeah, keep watching football, guys.